do you, I don't know how this normally works. So I um I I wanted to just share something from from Hebrews because we've been going through Hebrews um in the mornings quite recently. We've we've moved on to a slightly different series now, but we, we're going to come back to Hebrews again. Um, I I don't know if people have have Bibles in front of them um because I I don't know if we've got time just to yeah there you go John I don't know if we've got time just to read the whole thing. So it'd be good if you had it open. Um, and I'll pick out a couple of verses um, and you can have a look at them with me. Um, so he- Hebrews chapter two, uh, and we'll, we'll go basically up to the end of the chapter, um, starting, I think, at sort of verse. I can't see what verse we're starting. I'll, I'll get it up in a second. Um, I don't know if anybody's been watching uh, a lot of TV at the moment. I think that's one of the main things people seem to be doing in, in lockdown is to catching up on television. Um but David Attenborough brought out his most recent sort of planet documentary, The Perfect Planet, which I think is a really interesting name for the documentary. Um, but it's amazing. It's, it's this whole idea is they're taking on this tour of the world and they want to show you how amazing the world is. And the whole point of it is that you look at the world and you say, wow, isn't the world amazing? Look at all the, the mountains and the animals and the seas. Uh, and that's kind of where we start in this morning um, with Hebrews chapter, ch- chapter 2. It starts by quoting uh, a psalm, um, Psalm chapter eight, and it's King David of Israel. He, he look, he's basically he's looking up at the, the stars and the, the sky and the moons, and, and he's saying, wow, isn't the world amazing? Isn't creation amazing? And uh, as he does it, he sort of questions. He said, well, you know, what's our place in all? Where do people fit in? Where do, where do humans fit in to this incredible creation? Um, so I'm just going to read from, from Psalm eight, which is what's quoted here. Uh, in, in Hebrews chapter two. So you'll see that in verse six. Uh, and, and David says, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the, and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you're mindful of them? What are human beings that you care for them? You know, where do we fit in to all this? And here's the answer that he gives. He says, you have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You've made them rulers of the works of your hands. You've put everything under their feet. It's incredible because our place, our place in creation is this place of glory and honour. Everything you see before you, when you watch that documentary, when you watch anything on any of these documentaries, our place is above it all. It's, uh, it's to care for it. It's to, to see, it, see it grow. It's to bring it to order. And, and above everything else in all humanity, you're the one that's to be crowned with glory and honour people. That's humanity. That's the plan. That's the, that's the plan when God created that the humans were going to be in this amazing place. But the reality is, when we look around us, we don't really see that, do we? You know, we, we look around us, we don't see humanity crowned with glory and honour. We don't see the world brought to order. I think the reality, of, especially right now, in the last year we've had, is we see a world that's, that's not in order. We see a world of suffering, don't we? We see, we see that things aren't the way they're meant to be, and, and it's not the picture that psalm 8 has painted for us but look at verse 9 at present we do not yet see everything subject to them we don't see the world as it should be but we do see him we do see somebody changing things we see jesus we see jesus fixing things we see jesus putting things right putting humanity in the right place where they should be he says he's the pioneer of our salvation. I mean, he, he goes ahead of us to, to save us, to, to put things right. And, and because he does that, we get these amazing things that, that are mentioned all the way through these verses. You can, you can see them if you, if you get a chance another time. But I think what's really helpful about Hebrews uh, is it goes further than just telling us what Jesus did. You know, it says, this is what Jesus has done for you. And it's amazing. It's incredible. Crowned you with glory and honour. Um, but what it actually also says is, is how he did it, not just what he did, but how he went about achieving it all. And that's really important. I think that's the thing that's going to really help us today. And this is what it says. Uh, verse nine. But we do see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. It's through suffering. And it's through death, which are littered through these verses. That is how Jesus is crowned with honour and glory. Suffering is at the heart of the gospel. Verse 10. 
Uh, the pioneer of our salvation, Jesus, is made perfect through what he suffered. Now, it's, it's not saying that Jesus wasn't perfect in terms of, you know, he, he didn't he didn't sin. You know, we, we know that he was completely perfect. In fact, that he was completely sinless. But what it's saying is that that Jesus had to suffer. He, he couldn't have saved us without suffering. He had to go to the cross. He had to live like us and suffer like us and, and die like we die. Jesus became human to save us. And to be human is to suffer. Uh, and many of us know the reality of that, don't we? We, you know, we, we know what it is like to, to go through difficult times. We know what it's like to suffer. So, so the question is, what do we do? What do we do when we are going through those difficult situations? Like, like we have the past year, and, and there'll be a few more weeks and months of this, I'm sure. Well, the answer we've actually seen already is in verse 9. Just take a look at that. We, we see Jesus. That's the right response to suffering. When you see uh, the suffering, the world around you, when you see your own suffering, what you've also got to do is then see Jesus. You've got to look at Jesus. That's the only way we're going to get through this. And, it, and it's something that's repeated all the way through the book of Hebrews. Phrases like, look at Jesus, cast your eyes on Jesus, see how Jesus lived, see how Jesus suffered, see what Jesus achieved, see what he's, see what he's doing right now as you're suffering. All the amazing things listed in these verses. But it's hard, isn't it? It's hard to do that, to, to sometimes see Jesus, because sometimes, sometimes what you see actually is just, you know, the same four walls every day. Sometimes what you see is, is hospital beds filled up. Sometimes what you, what you see is stress and, and deadlines, and, and you think, well, actually, I can't, I can't picture what, what looking at Jesus looks like right now. I'm finding that really hard. Well, I think uh, chapter 3, verse 1 is really helpful. Because uh, here it, it doesn't just say look at Jesus. It, it puts it slightly differently. It says it says fix your thoughts on Jesus. It, it says in light of in light of the whole of chapter two, in light of everything that Jesus has done for you, and I'd recommend reading all that and seeing what Jesus has done for you. It says in light of all that, consider him, consider Jesus, contemplate Jesus. It's actually a little bit stronger than that. It's more like it's more like fix your attention on Jesus. Pay attention to him. Pay attention to what he's done. My wife, um, like I said, is is uh, intensive care nurse normally in, in not and and it's amazing actually. She's got some incredible stories of people that she's met in difficult times who have fixed their eyes on Jesus. One of them uh, was just before the the COVID restrictions came into place, um, and it's it, the, the intensive care in Nottingham is like this. It's an open ward, so all the all the beds are on the same ward together. Um, just separated by curtains and obviously there's she sees some some really terrible things in there but there was this one moment um where one of the patients was about to die they, they know he's about to die the family are there uh, around the bedside and so all they do is they shut the curtains because they want to give them privacy but obviously it's just curtains so you can you can hear you can hear everything and, uh, and, and normally she just hears just crying mourning but she said this particular occasion, she didn't just hear crying. She says something amazing happened. All she could hear from behind the curtain was singing. This, this family just started singing. And, it, and everyone on the ward just stopped and they could just hear this family amongst the crying singing. And they were singing a hymn. And it was incredible, she said. Just this most am amazing noise she'd ever heard. This singing where this family that... It was clear to everybody they were devastated, right? They were devastated by death, but they weren't afraid of it. Now, I, I don't know what words they were singing in those moments, uh, but it could have been from Hebrews 2, right? Look at verse 15. Jesus frees those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Jesus frees us from the fear of death. That family fixed their eyes on Jesus. They were freed from fear of death so that in the face of death, when they're confronted by it, they could sing. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. That's what that family did. She said there was another one was there, uh, quite different. It was a young girl in her 20s. Um, and, and this was during the, the COVID restrictions. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been into an intensive care unit, but they warn you before you go in 
this is a scary place because because there's lots of tubes and computers and wires and uh, and it wasn't just a scary place for this this girl in her 20s and um, because of all that but she was on her own in there she she couldn't have anyone visit and she's been in, a, in and out of the unit for a number of years and, uh, and mary says what this one girl does all she does is she plays music um she has one album that she plays in fact it was this one song that she played over and over and over again and there's a song by an artist called lauren daigle some of you might have heard of lauren daigle uh, and the artist is just singing about jesus and singing about uh, these promises that jesus has made to her and the album's called you say so you say these things about me and, and i believe them. that's what the lyrics are just this girl being reminded of what jesus has done and and, and saying you know what? i'm going to trust in you i'm going to fix my my thoughts on you right now in my loneliness i'm going to fix my thoughts on you well, I want just look at verse 12 for a second, because I think this is amazing. Um, verse 12 says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. Now, that's that's Jesus speaking there in verse 12. Jesus is singing the Father's praises. It's amazing. There's, a, there's a quite a few verses in the Bible talk about Jesus singing. This is one of them. Jesus is singing the Father's praises, and he's singing with Christians. So Jesus is there amongst uh, the, the congregation of believers, and he's calling you his, his brother and his sister, and he's, he's saying to you, look, look at God with me. Come on, let's do this together. Let's look at God. And he, he declares God's name to people around him, and he's saying things like, God is your father now. You're my brother. You're my sister. I'm not ashamed to call you family. I'm not ashamed to, to suffer alongside you. And because of the Holy Spirit, that, that verse is true for us today. Jesus is singing, pointing us to the Father, declaring the Father's name to us. And, and, and I've, I've used um, the two examples. I don't think it's, it's a coincidence that they both involve singing. Uh, and the, the, the thing is, you might not be able to sing with others right now. We can't at church. We can't sing. You might not be able to, to sing in a church building, but when you sing, you can sing with Jesus. Jesus sings with his people. And so that girl in the loneliness, she was using music, that family in the ward, they were singing. And because they, that was the way for them that they could fix their thoughts on Jesus. And he could sing alongside them. I think, I think we, we probably need people to help us with this. Um, maybe it could be you could be a person who could help somebody else fix their thoughts on Jesus, uh, a voice on the end of the, the phone, praying together, singing together, sharing verses with one another. We need to fix our thoughts on Jesus. And that's that's why I think things like this, like coffee morning, are so important, aren't they? It's so helpful. We can we can point each other to Jesus because when we're in suffering, that's what the Bible tells us to do. Consider him. Think about what he's done for you and what he's achieved for us through his suffering. It'd be good maybe if we just just pray together uh, and then we'll uh, maybe have another another cup of tea. Father, yeah. thank you that we uh, can call you father, that we've been uh, adopted into your family. And we see here Jesus calling us brother and sister, that together you are our father along with Jesus. Father, thank you that he's not ashamed to suffer alongside us, that he came to this world to suffer so that we can one day be crowned with honour and glory, the way things were meant to be, the way the world was meant to be. I pray that you help us to consider Jesus, to fix our eyes on Jesus, to cast our minds to Jesus when we're going through difficult times. And I just pray that you help us to do that with each other, that we might encourage one another to do that. Father, thank you for, for singing. Thank you for, for hymns and songs and, and the amazing words and, that are contained in them that we can, we can sing together alongside Christ who is singing with us as our brother and as, uh, as he calls us our family. I just want to pray for this group of people. Thank you that we can meet together this morning and, and chat and enjoy one another's company and, uh, and be reminded what it is that you have done for us today. Amen.